issues on the Big 550 KTRS. 923, John Deal, House Majority Leader, Speaker of the House in waiting. Tony Messenger, Editorial Page Editor of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And local gadfly, former Chief of Staff, Governor Holden. Jane Duker, you are up. Um, okay, I wanted to talk about um, the accessing of Regis records um, in St. Louis County. Regis being what? Regis is a statewide database that includes, you know, a lot of personal information about people, um, criminal background stuff, um, you know, address, phone number, driver's license, license, all kinds of personal information. And, and, it's a, and, and, and there are certain people that have access to it, namely police officers have access to it, but you have a unique login and so they can keep track of who's accessing the information, and you can only use it for law enforcement purposes. And if you improperly use it, it's it's a crime. Um, I mean, it's at least a misdemeanor. Um, so if police not more. would, while while investigating a crime, absolutely could, could check to, to see right. if Millhaven is doing anything nefarious right. or right. where he's supposed to be. And they can see and... records. They can see arrest records <sighs> of things that you know wouldn't be public records. Sometimes gotcha. you know that only law enforcement can see. So anyway, um, there was an allegation that um, uh, County Executive Dooley has two drivers that drive him around, and they're police officers. And um, there was an allegation that they were, you know, wrongfully checking Regis and just, you know, randomly checking people. And and political adversaries don't know. <laughs> and and so I think um, there's been some news outlets and other people who've been pursuing finding out who 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 accessed it and who they accessed. Now the records obviously. Um, you know the underlying records are, are never open records, but presumably who they who these people checked is. And um, there was an investigation by the St. Louis County Police Department. They did a report, and the report is sitting in you know the, on the county counselor's desk. It's up on the ninth floor. And you know why isn't that report being released? So the report's done. The report's it's done. sitting on Charlie Dooley's desk. Correct. <clears throat> and it, you know, and it's his drivers who were you know allegedly illegally accessing Regis records. I mean, you talk about the NSA. Why, why were they? I mean, do we know? No, what the- that's the point. What could possibly? Why were his personal drivers, police officers, checking records? I mean, that's, Who did you know, the investigation, and why don't they release the report? Well, why is it, is, that's a good question because I think the St. Louis County Police did. The investigation and they've sent the report over and i think my understanding is that the county's claiming it's a personnel matter so therefore it's not you know open to the sunshine law and, it, and it's like well has that report been sent over to you know the prosecutor's office you know if there's a allegedly a crime you know of illegally accessing these records and i mean i just think you know it's inside his office okay these are his personal drivers i mean and so you know release the report you know let it out if if you know, if there's a problem, let it out. But you know, I mean, I, I don't. Well, understand. either either act on the report, right, or let it out, right. I mean, right. Do something. There, there may be a reason. And I'm not, not sure. I'd like to. I'm I'm not sure that 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 that's not open under the Sunshine Law for another reason. I, you know, you can't just call something personnel. Um, you know, um, that that cloak is not as big as I think. Shouldn't trying to make the it. people, if they were spied on, shouldn't they know that? Well, they that's were the other sort thing. Is on? these? Yeah, I mean, so so what about the privacy of these people who were checked? And have they been told? Oh, by the way, you know, somebody was checking your records at random. Right. And you know, and that's that's not okay. I mean, there's very strict rules about who accesses that information, and it's supposed to be for law enforcement only. And I think um, if there was if there's a problem there, I think that people need to know. And it was right inside the ninth floor. Yeah, another solution to a situation like that, too, is just to have an independent prosecutor or investigator look look at at it it instead of trying to investigate. If if you're in charge, if the person who's ultimately in charge of a department that breaks a law is running or directing the investigation, that's always problematic. You can refer it over to McCullough's office or Or refer it to the attorney general. I mean, the bottom line is that the the computer trail is solid. I mean, Regis keeps track of who accesses and what they access. So, I mean, you know, that's pretty decent evidence of what was going on. It was a busy week in the county because filing deadline came and went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, John Deal, your Republicans have a number of people who want to take that. Yeah, I I, I think as I predicted on the show a couple months ago that that, um, when we got close to filing time and the race settled in that there would be a serious Republican candidate that filed for that seat. And uh, that did happen. Rick Stream, who's the current budget chair in the Missouri House, and he's a representative from Kirkwood, elected kind of in a swing mid-county district, which will determine probably an election like this, filed filed for county executive. Uh, there are, I would have to say he's the favorite in that race right now, but there is, a, there is a primary. And 
I don't think he's going to take anything anything for granted in that primary. Uh, but assuming he comes out of that, I think he'll face a very bloodied winner uh, between uh, Steve Stenger and Charlie Dooley, whoever comes out of that. So I think it's going to be a very competitive race for that this fall. Does Stenger have a chance, either Tony or Jane? Tony, does Stenger I, have a chance? I, I, I tend to think so. I, I think it'll be uh, – I, I think John's right. I think and, – and, and this is unfortunate um, – uh, if you're a Democrat in, in St. Louis County, because I, I do believe that the Dooley Stinger race will be very ugly. It will be, uh, there will be racial undertones to it. Um, and, and it will, uh, open the door to a potentially strong Republican candidate. Theoretically, the Republicans are going to have the same problem. They, they almost always have in primaries these days, even though it's a County executive race in which the sort of tea party politics shouldn't matter. Um, uh, in, in Republican primaries these days, Tea Party politics seems to matter, yep. even if you're running for recorder of deeds of, of Franklin <laughs> County, uh, like Senator Brian Nieves is going to do. But um, I, I tend to think that that it, it the, the I mean, it's too it's it's too early to, to call right now. And obviously, I haven't seen any polling or anything else. But I, I think Steve Stinger has some really strong arguments to be made against Charlie Dooley and. Uh, but Charlie Dooley has a strong traditional base of support in, in North St. Louis County that that if they come out and vote, uh, it's going to be a very close race. And he's also going to have and he works Francis hard. Slay back in him. Uh, and Francis Slay back in him is a big deal. And, but he's, he, he's lost the support of the unions. <laughs> yep. he's, he's lost the, the support of McCullough, which are two very Those big are two organizations very important in the constituencies. Yes. And so I, I, I think it's going to be I, – I still – I, I know there are enough power brokers behind closed doors really hoping that that Democratic primary doesn't happen, that I still wouldn't be hugely shocked if either Steve Stinger or Charlie Dooley uh, found a, an interesting way to bow out of the race. Uh, but That's probably the best answer, but, frankly. But, but, term, but, but right now, if I were predicting, who? Right <laughs> now, if I were predicting, I would say <laughs> it's, go, it's, it's I, going I to be think. a very <laughs> difficult, uh, 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 ugly race on the Democratic yeah, side. And, it, and, and I think John's right. If that happens, it, it, it gives Rick Stream or Matt Perello or I forget the third guy's Anthony name. Pasusa. Anthony Pasusa. Anthony Pasusa, whoever comes out of the Republican primary and – I would say probably Rick Stream uh, gives them a little bit of an advantage. It's still 60 percent, 60, 40 Democrat in St. Louis County. I mean, you know, so you're um, saying no matter who limps out of that primary, I think I think I think the Republicans going to have a a, a large hill to climb. I mean, Bill Corrigan was well funded, well liked, moderate, um, probably appealed to Democrats. They lost by about what six thousand votes when Dooley came out of his primary clean. So. Uh, it, it's a different – this will be a different environment, a different race. Rick Stream is – Bill Corgan's a good friend of mine. He's one of my law partners. I know him well. But, but, but Rick Stream is also a good candidate. Rick has won a battleground seat. The Kirkwood seat is the toughest House seat in St. Louis County for Republicans to win in and has been for eight years, and he's won that. But he's four terms he's ago. also voted for Agenda Twenty One Sharia Law. He's got some cuckoo stuff. Well, who's for Sharia be... Law? You one of those? Yeah, I guess it? I am. Yeah, I, I left my tinfoil hat at home. So I mean, he's gonna have some. He's gonna have some interesting votes and things that he's gonna have. All to right. Spend. What about the Democrats not finding anybody to run against Tom Schweik for state auditor? What about that? They, what's going on there? I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not that perturbed or upset about it. And if, if you don't have a good candidate, don't waste resources. Don't, you know. And if, if somebody wasn't that interested in doing it, I, you know, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, and and you know, I guess there's some t- statistics out there that said, you know, this is the first time since whenever. But I mean, I, you know, I I'm You're a big right fan. Of, I'm okay with. It. I'm a big fan of putting your resources where I, you. Where I you agree with Jane. It. I love it. I mean, they're, 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 so, 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 so when, that'll when, just make the primary between Hanaway and Schweik even better. Well, I'm, I'm looking this cycle when I'm running races, <laughs> yeah, you better. Um, when, when, when we come in, you know, this is the first time in decades that the auditor has been the top of the ticket. Usually we have a U.S. Senate race right. or there's other right. things going on. Um, and then that race is completely uncontested. You know, what I like about it, I know the Democrats have made much ballyhoo about uh, Coster and, and Claire McCaskill getting engaged in legislative races. Well, we were able to secure the commitments of both Roy Blunt and now Tom Schweik that he's unfettered to match whatever they do. So I'm excited about that. Tom Schweik's going to be fully engaged in our House races to help us however we want, as well as the Senate races. 
while as, he's running as, for as honor. Well. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's running for honor. He's, running he's got a nice little war chest, a <laughs> okay. work side about it. I think that's going to be a terrific outcome for us in our, in our legislative yeah. I mean, at least no Democrat can at least stand up and say, will you stay as auditor for four years, right? I mean, no one's going to have to do that now. I mean, you could have at least tried to embarrass him that way, but I, the Democrats can't now because they don't have anybody running. against I, them. I, I think a couple of things. I, I think, first of all, it's a mistake by the Democrats. I think when you try to do this Jedi nuts, night stuff, thinking four years out, it's a little bit too cute by half. The voters deserve to have a choice. I happen to think Tom Schweik's been a good auditor, and I happen to think he would probably win. But 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 you, you still create you just kill a them choice in for race. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you still create a choice for the 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 voters for independent voters when you say okay look we just uh, Tom Tom Schweik has been a good auditor but he's made. Uh, a lot of mistakes and he's made some really stupid pronouncements on things that have nothing to do with being the auditor uh so you create you create an opportunity for uh, a choice and so i think that's a mistake and whether or not he is going to run against Catherine hannaway or whatever else you know what these decisions we'll politics get made is in 2015 they, they get the changes changes happen in politics and so i think if the democrats really <sighs> didn't run anybody against tom schweik because of some Jedi Knight trick they're trying to do in 2016, I think that's a mistake. But here's the bigger issue, and it relates to all of, of, of the filing dates. Because of how badly this state and so many states do redistricting, most vo voters don't have a choice this year. Be whether they are Democrats or Republicans, the majority of seats in this state, in the, in the House and the Senate, are safe. And they're safer than they used to be because that's the way the politicians designed them in the redistricting system rather than having choice. And that's the biggest mistake. And that's not partisan. That's, that's on the Democrats. That's on the Republicans. The people in power designed a system to keep themselves in power. And, and, and that's bad for voters. Well, for, first of all, let's talk redistricting one-on-one. The House legislative seats and the Senate legislative seats are not drawn by House and Senate members. They're drawn by judges, which are appointed by the Supreme Court, who are not on the ballots. They draw the seats, not the House, not the Senate. Okay, number one. Number two, the voters, there's only, I think there's only something like 60 out of the 160 races total that don't have any opposition for either candidate. So the vast the vast majority of the races, people do have a choice between a Republican and a Democrat. I happen to have a Democrat run against me. I feel okay about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But you seem really scared, Joe. But I am. I'm Look having extra sweat. coffee in the morning, but we're gonna. I we're saw gonna the deal check you wrote the other day to the House Republican Committee. I guess you just don't feel like you need a lot. Yeah. How do you ways. like it? You file against me, and I start writing. You know, big check. Yeah. And, the Republicans. 100,000. So, 100,000. Uh, 100, Speaker of the House in waiting, if you beat your Democratic opponent, do you have anything else to cut? Do you want to finish that, that thought before Tony? So really Sorry. In, in Sorry. Oh, that's interrupt. okay. Wow. No, I'm just saying that, that there are, the voters do have choices in this election. I think just in, you know, it's, it's a lot of it's just by where people live. And, 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 but the, the biggest thing to, to correct is the fact that we do not draw our seats. Our seats are drawn by a panel of appellate judges that are appointed by the Supreme Court. That's John Deal, Tony Messenger, Jane Duker. The board meeting is in <sighs> session on KTRF.